What's the scariest story you know that is 100% true? Not sure if posted here, but a woman was abducted and raped by two men and then stabbed over 30 times. Her neck muscle completely removed, her guts spilling out. She crawled to the hospital with her head almost detached and survived. She wrote a book and now is a motivational speaker with two kids, despite the fact that she was disemboweled. A guy I know is a boat mechanic. So one Saturday he's on all alone in the shop doing some work on a boat and suddenly he comes to and he's on the ground. He knew there was water under the boat he'd been working on, so he assumes he's been electrocuted. He's vaguely aware of someone behind him. So he starts yelling help help I've been electrocuted, and he hears whoever is behind him leave. He keeps yelling, and eventually a guy in a neighboring business hears him, and comes to his aid. When he's at the hospital he finds out he wasn't electrocuted, someone had hit him on the back of the head with his own mallet. Nothing was stolen from the shop. Meaning someone who was never caught, was just walking by and spontaneously decided to hit him on the back of the head with a mallet, for no reason. I just think it's so creepy. That Netflix documentary about the pizza guy in Erie, Pennsylvania who had a bomb collar put around his neck then was forced to rob a bank. As a former delivery driver I was scared shitless the entire time, but also super intrigued by the investigation and the people involved. I'm really blanking on the name of the mini series right now, but I'll try to find it and make an edit if no one comments before. There was a serial killer known as the weepy voiced killer. He would kill people then call 9-1-1 from a payphone, crying and begging them to catch and stop him. You can find the recordings of his 9-1-1 calls on YouTube. I saw something on TV about this guy a while ago. I usually don't care for these kind of shows, but that episode was really interesting. His 9-1-1 calls are really creepy. My great aunt and her husband owned a successful horse farm and found out that their son was stealing money from them. After he found out he went into their house while they were asleep and shot them to death. First my great uncle while he sleeping and my great aunt was found shot in her back laying across the front porch steps. He's currently in jail for a long time. If you climb Everest, you are basically guaranteed to see at least one dead, frozen carcass on your way up. They use them as mile markers basically. Ah yes one right turn past the dead guy with the orange coat and you can set your tent up. A friend of a friend was traveling in the UK and had to hitchhike. He dropped her off at home. The next day police came knocking and proceeded to take her to the station and demand how she knows this man, what is their relationship etc. She finds out that the man had killed another female hitchhiker that same day and had her in the trunk at the same time he was driving her the friend. For some unknown reason he hadn't killed her. She couldn't sleep and cried for days and her home was placed on watch. Well I would too Jesus duck. I would be overwhelmed with terror and relief that this crazy son of a bitch decided not to kill me. Back in the 90s, my mom was on the highway heading home from a friend's house late at night. She was driving a really nice Thunderbird. After a while this big white van drove next to her, and the driver started performing some very rude gestures, and being young and dumb, my mom reciprocated the gestures. Then the dude pulled up a big bowie knife to the window. My mom started panicking, and sped up to get away, and the van was following right along. Then the guy tried to run her off the road. Keep in mind they're probably going about 100 miles per hour. She gets on the exit to get home, and he's still following her. When she does get back to her house, which she shared with my grandparents, she pulled into the driveway honking the horn and screaming trying to wake someone up. The van pulls into the driveway, just as my grandfather comes out in his underwear with a gun. The dude got scared and drove off. My mom wouldn't leave her house for a month except for school, but never at night. Fatal familial insomnia. The whole story is batched and perhaps the most terrifying Wikipedia rabbit hole I've ever gone down. Only a few families have this genetic disorder, I Ike, and once you develop it, that's it, you die an agonizing death from an inability to sleep. It starts off like regular insomnia, but progresses over a few years, until you legit go insane and finally shut down. Nothing, not even the most potent drug, can induce sleep, even when they tried to put them in comas. 
the brain remained completely active. Edit, barn rips are definitely included in the whole most potent drug thing, guys. I'm sure the doctors and researchers have considered the efficacy of fat barn hits to combat the insomnia. This is second hand from my mom, so I don't remember everything, but when I was younger like 3 or 4, and she was home alone with me some guy came up to the door. This was before cell phones and people were nicer, so she answered it even though it was like 8 or 9 at night. Well the guy was asking, if he could come in, and use her phone, but she said no. He asked a couple more times, before walking in and immediately got stopped by the family dog grabbing his hand, and holding it tightly. He started to get nervous and my dad's dog led him back to the door he had walked further in at this point my mom was able to push him out and lock the door before running upstairs and calling the police. The cops picked him up a little while later and they found out he had been in a bar fight and stabbed a guy a bunch of times. Without my older brother my mom and I cold been seriously hurt. He was the best dog ever and lived till the ripe age of 15. Last summer in my city a 14 year old girl was great near a train station. After her abuser left her she tried to get help and flagged down a vehicle and was graped a second time in the car of the man who stopped. Two complete strangers graped her on the same day. It happened only a few miles away from my house and I still think about it from time to time. Friend of a friend was offshore welding and his line was snagged by a fishing boats. It pulled him up and killed him because of his death. My friend said the saddest part was the funeral. His 5 year old daughter just staring in the coffin, left completely alone in the world. My son was 4 when he lost his dad. After the funeral, he kept asking when he got to see his dad. It took quite some time for him to understand that he couldn't. One of my friends is going through this right now. Her husband was murdered almost exactly one year ago, her son was 3. He asks for his daddy every day. It's absolutely heartbreaking. And the asshole who murdered him is out on bail. Back in 2000 I believe, I was in 5th grade living in California, and it was late at night. My family was just at the house and suddenly there was a huge banging on the door, that just kept going like someone was scared. My dad went to answer it, and it was a lady, that just came in. I was pretty young, and don't remember the details, but apparently she was saying there was a guy on a horse chasing her trying to either kill her or something. My family was being nice but skeptical, until they saw a man on a horse outside the house. Horses aren't exactly that common to see out and about even though there are a few places that have them. I could only imagine what the lady was going through. She even came back a few days later, and thanked my dad with flowers, and said he saved her life. My grandmother used to work at a mental illness facility when I was little. It was a place prisoners went after committing crimes that were so horrific they were deemed very mentally unstable and not suitable for a prison. One of her patients who was very fond of her was put into this place because he had strangled his mum and dad one night hid their bodies under the floorboards and every now and then brought his mother's body up to have sex with. He was caught after a few months because the smell of rotting corpses had reached the neighbors and they were cornered that they hadn't seen them in a while my grandmother lived within walking distance from this facility and so the prisoners that were deemed well enough to roam around the grounds were able to see her walking home one of the other patients most have told him about where she lived because one night he escaped and went straight to my grandmother's house knocking on the door and begging to come in Safe to say he was caught very quickly, and my grandparents later moved house. Still scary to imagine though. I don't know if this is really scary, but the thought of experiencing this scares me to death. During WW1 the gas attacks were sending people ducking crazy, while simultaneously destroying them. An allied soldier wrote that, while retreating he saw another soldier laying on the ground clawing at his throat, blood going everywhere. Then he noticed that one of the soldier's hands had been blown off, he was trying to rip his own throat out with his single hand and a bloody stump. This is amidst a landscape where year old bodies are being used as sandbags, and cadavers have been eaten out, and turned into water rats nests. I might have got some of the details wrong, but it was hell on earth. Terrifying. Source, Blueprint to Armageddon, Hardcore History Podcast by Dan Carlin. 
my mom stayed in a hospital for a week at the same time that a serial killer worked there that was killing patients. The scariest part is I didn't even realize how close of a call she could have had until 20 years later, when I was researching famous serial killers. Editing to at, since people have been asking, it was Charles Cullen. The murder of Ibn Pearson. She was targeted by Peter Sutcliffe a serial killer known as the Yorkshire Ripper for being a prostitute. He hit her on the back of her head with a hammer several times. He then noticed that there was a taxi nearby, so he dragged her behind an old sofa and to stop her from making noise, he shoved horsehair down her throat while pinching her nose shut. When the taxi left she was still alive, so he kicked her and even jumped on her chest with all his body weight and eventually she died. She had two young children which makes the story even worse. 